In this video today, we're going to be going over the Very Good Food Company and talk about their latest quarterly reports, as well as I'll be going through their annual report and pulling out some key information that you guys should know if you're a shareholder. This video is sponsored by the Very Good Food Company, and I have covered this company quite extensively in the past. And the reason why I love the Very Good Food Company, it's a fairly straightforward business to understand. They essentially make plant-based meats, and they sell that to customers who love plant-based meats. And you can see the price per pound that they sell it for on their website. As well, management is very transparent about what they believe that their facilities can achieve in the future. So this makes it very easy for me as an investor to understand what kind of revenues they're going to be pulling out in the future. Although the company may seem priced to perfection right now, but if we're looking two, three years down the road, I would say the company is looking relatively cheap. But enough with me just talking at you right now, let me actually show you what the company's reported in their annual report as well as their quarterly earnings. First off, we've got to talk about the Very Good Food Company's quarterly results. So they reported Q4 just last week. In 2020, revenues increased by 364% to $4.6 million compared to the prior year. Adjusted gross profit in 2020 increased to 32% compared to 16%, so that also doubled. They have had a significant increase in production capacity, e-commerce sales, and distribution partnerships, which drive continual operation and financial growth. So these are all positive points about the Very Good Food Company and what they accomplished this entire year. Mitchell Scott stated, Our financial results in 2020 demonstrated the success we have achieved in implementing a vertically integrated business model to build our The Very Good Food House of Brands into an extensive and innovative plant-based product portfolio. Our growth is guided by our simple mission, which is lofty, badass, but beautifully simple. Get millions to rethink their food choices while helping them do the world a world of good. And we are doing this by offering plant-based food options so delicious and nutritious. We're helping this kind of diet become the norm. We are pleased to report that through the success of our e-commerce channel, which demonstrated an 825% increase in online and continued demand from our retail distribution partners with an increase in retail distribution points from 100 to 1300. We have started to build the foundation to become a key player in North America's plant-based food industry as our purpose-driven business resonates with customers. In addition to this, forward-looking statements are, we're on track with the rollout of our new production facility in Vancouver, providing us with a substantial growth opportunity to increase production capacity by 2,690%, with 37 million pounds of annualized product in 2021. And if they're able to produce this 37 million pounds of annualized product, just looking at their website, on average, it sells for about $10 per pound. And that's a little bit conservative, actually. So it's probably a bit more like 12 or 13, but let's just take 10. If we multiply 37 million pounds by $10 per pound, we get $307 million. And compare that to 4.6 million, of course, that's just going to be a crazy revenue growth once they bring this facility online. But you also have to realize, although they can make 37 million pounds, you have to be realistic as an investor, are they able to sell that? So that's an outlook that you have to take and consider as an investor. But for me personally, I think that it's very possible for them to sell 37 million pounds of annualized product when they've already bought another facility that's gonna be producing 98 million pounds of annualized product. So I'm sure management believes that they're gonna easily sell through this 37 million pounds of annualized product. And the way that they're gonna sell this product is to enter into new relationships with grocery chains through distribution partners in opening their own e-commerce website to new high growth markets. So there's a lot of exciting stuff happening for the Very Good Food Company in this next year. However, when we look at the stock price, we can see that it was trading around $5.04 on Monday, April 26th. And that's when they released the earnings. The stock price went up a little bit. However, it's come back down. And the reason why I think it's come back down is because a lot of the news that they reported here um, about the future plans are already known. And right now, I think there's a lot of consolidation happening in the stock. It's been trading flat for a fair number of months. So I think the next catalyst for the Very Good Food Company is when they start to produce closer to 37 million pounds of annualized product from the new facility in Vancouver. Until they can prove out that they can do that and sell it, the shares may trade sideways. Or as a conservative investor, that's probably what I'm expecting from the Very Good Food Company. 
Other announcements about new markets or possible new facilities that they're buying will obviously probably have a good or positive impact on the stock itself. So keep your eyes and your ears peeled for that. Also be sure to check out The Very Good Food Company on YouTube as I just started this channel five days ago. And their first video has 1.4K views on it already. So it looks like they're exploring out video methods to actually disseminate information, as well as just allow the founders to speak to retail investors through YouTube videos. So be sure to subscribe to their channel, as I'm already subscribed. Now some quick facts about the Very Good Food Company and their 2020 annual report. They have 14 SKUs in the market, eight of which they launched in 2020. They have four lease production facilities. They have 1,300 distribution points, three no logistic partnerships, 1,800 orders per week in Q4 of 2020, 40,322 total orders in 2020. They have increased production capacity from 8,100 pounds to 20,000 pounds per week at the end of 2020. So that's more than a 2x. In 2020, they had 489,393 units sold, and they currently have 100 plus employees. They have 2,000 active monthly e-commerce subscribers. So this is a number to watch for because this is very predictable revenue as people who subscribe to this don't churn as easily. And last but not least, they're basically in all 50 states and all provinces and territories within Canada. Looking at their revenues and how they've been growing, in 2019, they earned about $1 million of revenue. In adjusted gross profits, it was around 156,000. In 2020, they blew their 2019 revenues out of the water, producing $4.6 million of revenue. And adjusted gross profit was $1.5 million. If we look at the breakdown of the revenue by channel, they have about 73% from e-commerce. They only have $0.8 million from wholesale, and they have $0.4 million from the butcher shop. I totally expect their wholesale revenues to increase quite rapidly as they've been forming a lot of partnerships. And if we look at their revenue by geography, currently most of the revenue comes from Canada at $4 million a year, and the US is about $600,000. Another important thing to look at is the strategy for management and what they're planning to do. So down here on this next page, we can see that in 2020, they have meat alternatives. In 2021 and beyond, they're trying to branch out into cheeses, which they already have through an acquisition. They're also looking for dairy alternative companies to possibly acquire or make their own, as well as for sauces. And these all sort of complement each other. Now an even more detailed list of their key priorities. So production, they're planning to establish the Rupert facility in BC, begin food production in the Patterson facility. So this is actually over in the States. They want to scale capacity of existing culture nut facilities. They're also going to be launching Mount Pleasant flagship store in Vancouver. They've already refined brand strategy and positioning, retail and marketing plans. So we can see the check mark beside that. They built out their product and innovation strategies already. They're launching the Very Good Cheese Company and they're launching or planning to launch gluten-free butcher select product line. For mergers and acquisitions, they're looking to acquire brands to support the portfolio expansion. For the geography and channel, they've already developed strategies to expand the number of retail and wholesale distribution points in North America. They're looking to expand e-commerce transaction volume for Canada and the US. And they're going to build out e-commerce platforms and launch products in Europe. So this has not yet come. For sustainability, they're going to advance ESG strategies, obtain non-GMO certification for products, and B Corp certification for the Very Good Food Company. The last thing that I want to speak about here is risks regarding the Very Good Food Company. So yes, it was impressive that they had $4.6 million of revenue in 2020. However, when comparing that to their market cap, of $461 million, that means they have a PS ratio of over 100. But when comparing that to the market cap of $461 million, that PS ratio right now is at 100. And that's not how profitable they are. That's their price to sales. So that's not including the cost of selling the products or paying employees. So that's one major risk that we're taking as investors. However, with these growth companies that are popping out 364% growth in revenue each year, that's why we pay such a premium with a PS ratio of 100. If they continue to grow at 364% next year, we just do the math here, their revenues would be around $16.74 million. And if we took their market cap currently 
divided by their future sales expectation if they do achieve this 364% growth. Then we get a PS ratio of around 27.5, but keep in mind this is my estimate, not the company's. And seeing as they are gonna be growing their production capacity by 200 or 2,690%, then potentially a revenue increase of 364% this year is actually possibly small compared to what they could do in 2021 if they achieve the full production capacity from this Vancouver facility. But there's still some risk because a lot of the Rupert facilities starts to come online. So far, they've only commissioned one production line. So if there are any snags in the commissioning of the rest of this facility, that could be a risk. And the very good food company tends to be a higher risk investment versus other companies out there. However, with higher risk comes also higher reward. Again, like I said earlier, if they're able to hit the 37 million pounds of food and get about $10 per pound, from this facility alone, they'll be bringing $370 million a year. And comparing that with their market cap currently, that brings it closer to like a 1.5 PS ratio, which is very, very reasonable for a company like this. And also we're not even considering the Patterson facility, which could possibly pump out 98.5 million pounds of product. And that's really one of the main reasons why the Very Good Food Company is priced to perfection right now with a PS ratio of 100. However, they should be able to bring up these new facilities online fairly quickly within the next couple of years, assuming all goes according to plan. So for the time being, I'm holding all my shares and not planning to sell anything at all. If you guys want to find out more about the Very Good Food Company, you can check out the website down below I've linked in the description. It leads you to their investor relations page, which allows you to view the annual report as well as see news updates. And if you want, you can sign up for email updates as well so you don't miss a beat. Anyways, that's everything that I have for you guys today. If you guys want to check out other videos on the Very Good Food Company, they're right up here. If you're there, I'll see you there. If not, keep up the grind and have a great day. Hello.